Well, hey everyone, hope you are doing well. We're continuing our um, study of the book of Proverbs, just going down verse by verse, Bible study method. Uh, we're in Proverbs chapter 16. And again, as a quick definition of what the book of Proverbs is about, Proverbs is basically the proper use of knowledge, which is the definition of wisdom. So we're in Proverbs chapter 16, and again, we're going to go verse by verse and emphasize a few, uh, a few truths that we can hold on to, learn from, and live out. Proverbs chapter 16 says, verse 1, The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. We can prepare, we can prepare all we want to in this life. We can plan, we can do everything, but at the same time, ultimately, it's about God's heart what he wants, how he wants to lead us, what he wants to do. So yeah, we can plan, but we have to make sure the Lord is in the midst of our plans, from the beginning of our plans to the middle to the fruition of our plans. Uh, make sure the Lord is part of it because it's his answer, it's his voice that we need to listen for. Verse 2, all the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. See, sometimes when we self-judge, we look so good. Like, we're like, yeah, we look amazing. Well, compared to them, we especially look good, right? That's not right. That is not the right heart to have, right? In our own eyes, we seem pure at, the t at times. But listen, the Lord weighs the spirits. In other words, He is the judge. He is the one to let you know and me know about where we're at with Him. He is a just judge. And I love this next verse. Um, verse 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Don't you love that? So if you commit your actions to the Lord, if you do everything unto God, if you commit your works and your ways to the Lord, what is He going to do? Your thoughts. He's going to establish your thoughts. See, when our thoughts are going crazy, when we let those discouraging thoughts come in, when we, get dri uh, when we drift off of where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do, guess what? It's probably because we're not committing our works to the Lord. Because when we put our action into serving God and furthering His kingdom, that's when our thoughts are established. That's when things make sense. That's when we understand what life is about. Verse 4, The Lord has made all for Himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. So again, the Lord made all. He made all. He knit us in the womb at the same time. You grow up, you get to the age of accountability, and that person has a the free will, free agency, the choice to choose God, to walk with Him, or to run away and to stay away. That's, that's the beauty of choice. That's the beauty of God giving us free will. He doesn't force us. He doesn't force us to do stuff. He gives us free will so we can decide. Are we going to walk with God or are we going to walk towards the fire? Verse 5, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Again, God hates pride. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. So the wicked, the prideful, join forces to try to bring people down. They get their little click of wickedness, and they go out, and they just try to tear stuff, tear people down, break things down. That's not God's heart. God's heart is to build up. Right In verse 6, In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Are we living to please God? Or are we living to please others? Or are we living to please ourselves? Well, the Bible tells us to live to please God. And when you do that, you can even be at peace with your enemies. I love it. Verse 8, Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues with justice. In other words, do what is right, have integrity, be honest, and then you're going to be rewarded and blessed by God. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. How many of us know that? We've sometimes maybe planned our way, and as the Lord is directing our steps, we're, we're about to take a misstep because we're like, wait, this wasn't part of God's will. I'm going to step this way because that's where he's leading me. So we can make plans all day long, but ultimately God is the one that directs our hearts. It's a beautiful thing. God's in charge. He knows where we need to go. He knows what we need to do. Verse 10, divination is on the lips of the king. 
His mouth must not transgress in judgment. Honest weights and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. Again, just judge. God is a just judge. Not you, not me. It is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness. For a throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him who speaks what is right. As messengers of death is the king's wrath, but a wise man will appease it. In the light of the king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud of the latter rain. And so this whole thing is in the context of kingship. You know what I mean? Like we're here to serve the king. And our king is the king of king and lord of lords, Jesus, right? And we get to serve him. And that's a huge blessing. Verse 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding to be chosen rather than silver. I love that. Wisdom is uh, more valuable than material riches, than gold, than silver, than rubies, than gems, than anything else. Gold, none of that stuff compares to wisdom from God. Verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil, and he who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Again, pride. Pride is over and over in the Proverbs and throughout the whole Bible since the fall of Satan. Pride has been something that God has hated, right? Pride elevates your, uh, self and rips down others. Pride make, makes much of self and, and uh, talks against others. Pride lifts self up and pride pounces on others horrible god hates it he hates pride better to be of a humble spirit with a lowly than to divide the spoils with the proud god loves humility loves humility the bible tells us to humble ourselves in the sight of god he who heeds the word wisely will find good and whatever and whoever trusts in the lord happy is he don't you believe that don't you see that you've seen that in your life when you trusted god for everything you're happy you're blessed you're joyful you're like this is where it's at and then there are those contrast moments where you don't trust in the lord for something and you realize how much turmoil your, your heart is in and how unsettled you are it's like what am i doing i'm trusting in self i'm being maybe even prideful it's time to release that to God and start walking humbly, pleasing Him, trusting Him. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be blessed. You're going to be happy. Verse 21, the wise in heart will be called prudent, and sweetness of the lips increases learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it, but correction of folly, of fools is folly. Let me read that again. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it, but the correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. <laughs> Pleasant words. Words that build up. Words that encourage. Words that don't destroy, but words that are actually uplifting. Who have you uplifted today? Who have you encouraged? Who have you shared a verse with? We don't use this to thump people. We don't use this to try to break people down. We use this to build people up, to bring encouragement, because the enemy of the world and your flesh brings enough discouragement. We are ambassadors of encouragement. We are ambassadors and representatives of hope, true hope. Be a hope dealer. Verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. I believe that's the third time that's mentioned. So it's an important one to remember. Sometimes what we think is right is not right according to God. So it's time to change direction. The person who labors, labors for himself, for his hungry mouth drives him on. Right? Don't work for a selfish means. Work for and unto God. An ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on his lips like burning fire. A perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. He winks his eyes to devise perverse things. He pursues his lips and brings about evil. And so, I mean, it, doesn't, it never pays off to be violent or wicked, simply put. Verse 31, the silver-haired uh, silver head is a crown of glory, if it is found in the way of righteousness. In other words, those who are older in the faith and older physically, if you're actually building people up in the faith, 
then you're pleasing to God. Then you're well pleasing to the Lord, a sweet smelling aroma. If you're older and grow bitter and start just talking against everything and everyone, it doesn't please God. 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Are you slow to anger? Or do you just go off when you hear something you don't like? Or some statement? Or something you disagree with? He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. I love it. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. In other words, you have self-control? Or do you just go off? We are called to have self-control. It's one of the fruit of the spirit. Fruits of the spirit. Right? The last one, the ninth one. It's not an order of importance. It's just as important in all the other eight. But to, um, to be slow to anger, to have self-control. Verse 33, last verse. The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Right? So you might make a decision and realize, no, that was the wrong decision. I need to go the way of the Lord. He's showing me something different. I went this way, but he's like, no, you need to go this way. We can plan our ways. We can pray. But ultimately and always, God, God's leading is always the right thing to do. It's always the right way to go. So may we let God lead our everyday lives. This was Proverbs, you guys, chapter 16. Hopefully it encouraged you and lifted you up. Have a blessed day. Talk to you next time.